the, what I tried to do was I tried to tell the story through the point of view of the people in the village and how they saw it. And I tried to stay away from stylizing it or kind of putting in my two cents into the film. So I try to keep it as, as I, I've researched it for about three years. I had all the court documents. I've talked to pretty much every single person that was involved in the, in the case. Um, I've had the recordings uh, from, from the radio station. So I try to be very close to it. Um, but I, I'm sure like from the village to village, some variations of uh, you know the tradition might happen. There was um, a fine levied uh, against the Herat's father in, by the villagers. Can you give us some perspective about how much money that is? What, what, how much of his yearly income would that have represented? Uh, Did everyone hear the question? Yeah. Um, well, at, at that time, I think it would be more than what he would make a year. Oh. And also the importance of it is that I think the main punishment was for her to be exiled from her village. And, and in that tradition, you know, if a woman could be any age of a woman, she kills a man. If she's not killed and buried with him, she has to basically leave that village. And um, it took the father actually a couple of years to be able to pay. Um, but, you know, in dollar terms, uh, what is it now? Probably about hundred and fifty dollars in today's dollars. Yeah, in today's dollars. Uh, what happened to her sister? Uh, she, uh, she's good. She's, <laughs> she's a nurse. She's married. She has two uh, kids, and uh, she lives uh, close to Addis Ababa. But what happened is. She was able to go back to school later on, after the arbitration had settled and, and that the family wasn't in danger anymore. Um, but yeah, she's all right. <laughs> Has she ever been back to her village since? Yes, well, that's the big story, actually. Uh, here it's um, for about 15 years or so, she couldn't be able to go back. Uh, she actually had to change her name because the, the, the family of the person that she killed uh, vowed revenge, so they were looking for her. She actually left the country for five years, um, and when she returned, she went back to the village and the whole thing started again. Yeah, so again, they wanted her to be killed and you know um, and Maza got involved and she had to actually take her away from the village and hit her again this time at her uh, mother's house so this this thing is really fresh I mean we we're still going through it a child actor is, is, is very difficult to work with. She'll, and you, you're, you drew such a wonderful performance from her. Um, where did, like, how did it come about for her to be involved in the, the project? Um, you want to answer this? Um, so they don't write child. So a lot of those actors were first-time actors, but some were also theater actors. There's a there's a strong theater tradition in Ethiopia, but um, they don't write roles for kids. So we had a really hard time uh, trying to find her. And casting actually was the longest part of the entire process. It was eight months. Um, so what we did is we printed out like 5,000 flyers. Uh -huh. <laughs> 5, flyers. And um, went to schools, actually, right? So we flyered, and then we were like shuttling a bus from like the schools to our little one-room one studio, casting studio. Um, and the irony of all of this is that Literally, it was like two weeks out. I was like, Z, we need to find her. Like it, it, two weeks before we were shooting, we saw and found her. We heard that this um, old actor, Vespian, was giving free theater classes. Yeah, we'll set up. Um, and um, it was in Z's old elementary school. So we were driving, and he's like, hey, this is my old school. He walks into his old classroom, and there's 
here, you know, there's Tizita. Um, and it was, she was two weeks into the, the workshops, um, and he saw her and he was like, oh my God. So we let her read and she totally killed it. Um, <laughs> she totally killed it. She was amazing. Um, she's just yeah. very gifted. Yeah, no, I, actually, she, she, you're absolutely right. It's very hard working with, with young actors, but um, the first time she walked in and, and did the, the read, actually gave her rather tough part, which is the, the scene that you guys saw her start, the kind of the meeting in the apartment. So why don't you have a husband? Mm -hmm. So that was the scene that I wanted. I want, and she was reading it with me, because uh, I didn't have uh, uh, Meron, who's a known actor. And she was playing it with me and, and playing it like dead serious with the emotions. And it's about three pages uh, on the script. And she didn't even look down once. So wow. I didn't have to do much with her. Uh, she taught me a lot, actually. <laughs> yes, yeah. I think so. <laughs> she is. Here's the next big thing. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, I congratulate you and uh, the cinematograph. Everything is excellent. Thank you. I've been in Ethiopia mm -hmm. and, and I've been in court cases. Mm -hmm. And how did you manage to get the censorship? I mean, I'm just <laughs> shocking because I, I've, I've, I've seen myself in the court and being like it was me in there. You know, yeah. you know, you know, trying all those answers. Yeah. You know, like yeah. it just uh, you done it perfectly in the, which. Because I wrote five pages and I handed in to the local judge to the Supreme Court. Yeah. I left it yeah. in the five yeah. pages. How the if the case is going, and then how did you manage to pass the censorship? I, well, in, in in films, it says in the Constitution that like, the government does not censor films. So they they have two things that they do, which is like they don't censor your script, but before you show the film in Ethiopia, it has to go through what is called, it's not really censorship, but they look at it. Surveillance. <laughs> and, uh, and they look for two things. Is it, you know, uh, does it say bad things about the different ethnicities that we have in the country? Or does it say bad things about religion? So those, those are the two things that they look at. But when we were doing the film, actually, the government helped us a great deal. I think the fact that this is a known story and if they had trying to do anything against what had happened, and I was trying to be very forceful with them too, it's like, you know, we shot at the Supreme Court, and no one has shot at the Supreme Court. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and but, I mean, the, the I mean, it was very simply it's just going through the channels and going yeah, and it's, yeah, yeah, but he's also very stubborn, and so I, I don't think anyone else could have done this but him. No, seriously, like he just knew how to maneuver. You know, when people said no. I think also this is a story that makes the Ethiopian government look good when it comes to rights and things, and you know that's at times problematic, right? I mean, yeah. so I think uh, there's a lot of reasons, and women's rights actually in Ethiopia, for whatever reason, is the one space where talking about rights is okay, you know. Um, and there's actually a lot of progressive work being done. So it's all of these things. It's all of these things together. Um, but they were very supportive throughout the whole process, and even there's a funny story in the Supreme Court. The day we were shooting Supreme Court scene, um, uh, you know, <laughs> communication broke down and we showed up at like 4 a.m. or something on set and the people at the court didn't know we were coming. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a crew of like 65 people, it's like all this equipment and they thought they were being surrounded by foreigners. They're like, yeah. what's going on, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and they weren't going to let us shoot, but then once they figured it out, they were actually correcting the wardrobes of like the judge, like, it's that one, not that one. And they got really into the whole, the whole shoot. Um, right now what we're trying to do with this film is actually, when we started um, six years ago, we knew that just having a film was not going to be enough and it wasn't going to change anything um, in Ethiopia. So we started a, a, an outreach program, we wrote an outreach program that we will take this film to every village in Ethiopia, and however long it's going to take us. Aww. And with the support you know, from audience and, and organizations, that we wanted to be able to 
to go to these villages and have uh, really an open dialogue about about this tradition. And we have really beautiful traditions, and this one is not one of them. So we want to spend a little bit of time I mean, working. We have about three or four scripts that we're working on right now, but I kind of want to put those aside and, and want to see if I could be able to to move this thing. And maybe we can get the Ministry of Education involved, and maybe with the Parliament we can change some policies. and. The Ethiopian government also uh, just announced a commitment about two months ago to end child marriage by 2025. So we're piggybacking and trying to use this film as a tool in the educational system there. Um, so working with the Ministry of Education and thankfully a lot of great organizations like Ford Foundation who are helping us um, do this work. I, I actually have another thought that maybe we can go to. How, so, Angelina Joey, how did that happen? And, uh, you know, what did it bring to the project or did it take away from the project? Um, no, I think it, it brought a lot of good things to the project. Angelina came about um, towards the end of uh, the project. We actually have finished editing, um, we completed the project, and we're about to send it to festivals. And one of our executive producers, Julia Moretto, and Marek were talking about it. And they said, like, oh, Angelina would be a great ambassador for this film. Yes. And then uh, Julie's, Julie is an artist, uh, and Angelina's agent collects Julie's work, I think, right? Well, it was a, they had a mutual friend yeah. in common. And so that's, that's how Julie they could did. get her, and so we literally sent the DVD and, um, a week later, she called us, literally, like, called us. <laughs> and said, what can I do? What can I, you know, how can I help? Whatever you guys need. So she's been actually very amazing and supportive. Yeah. So I'm sure it's open to people. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Is there a capital punishment in Ethiopia? I mean, could a 14-year-old have been executed? Absolutely. in terms of numbers, but the, there's a split in Ethiopia, like in a lot of countries, between constitutional courts and, and the customary law. So it's hard to track everything that happens in the customary law, where, which is also a space where some of this could happen. Mm -hmm. um, but I actually don't know what the answer is for numbers. No, I don't either. Um, but there, I don't know. We've heard of, um, especially with political um, and I know that like killing a person, a murder charge is is the punishment is death. So okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we should also say he's part of different because um, I was producing the film, and two years into it, I ended up marrying Z, and then got pregnant, and we had him like literally while we were shooting the film. So we always say we had twins, Lucas and and different. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that might be all the time we have, actually. Um, but I'm sure you're able to stick around for a few minutes outside. And if there's anything else you'd like to talk about, please uh, come on.